So we want to, at this point now, look at the electrical parts, some of the common problems and how we can remedy the, these problems. So now we'll be looking at the, the alternator end of the engine, okay? So voltage-related issues. There are some of the common problems associated with the electrical part of the generators. So the first is voltage. Uh, we're looking at is voltage fluctuations. That is, the voltage is going up or down. So if that is the case, we want to check the excitation system. Okay. So the the voltage regular the AVR could be delivering alternating current. Are we getting it? So if it is delivering alternating current to the excitor feed, which means that the excitor measure will be producing and uh, decaying, producing and decaying. Are we getting it? So that can cause fluctuation of the magnetic feed in the main feed and thus that will eventually cause fluctuation of what is induced into the main armature. Okay, so we want to check the AVR. Another thing that can also cause uh, voltage fluctuation could be the those diode rectifier plate. If it is bad, okay, so it is not rectifying. It will be delivered, especially if uh, they are shorted. Okay, so instead of rectifying, it will be delivering a uh, AC voltage to the main feed so that can cause fluctuation of uh, voltage so we like we said we want to also look at the exciter okay there is another uh, problem that is also associated with with the, that uh, rectifier diode that is in the exciter the excitation system, you will see that once it is open, remember we just talked about if it is uh, shorted, if it is open, that means one of the phases we may not be delivering. So in such cases, it can produce, uh, you see the voltage steady, but when you load the generator, you see it dropping, okay? So we want to inspect the entire excitation system. Then it is also possible that uh, the stator winding or even our feed winding is having problems. So we want to check the feed winding, check the, since the feed winding is not accessible, so we want to check the stator winding, check for grounding, check for, that is if we have a, a provision for checking the winding uh, resistance okay with low resistance meter milliohms meter we want to check the winding resistance check uh, the continuity to ground that is we want to check the insulation level okay then it is also possible that the load is not balanced if the load is not balanced you know that has a way of affecting the magnetic feed remember the current that is flowing that is the load current they will still flow through each of those phases of uh, the the armature itself okay the state of winding in this case now so that too will affect the magnetism apart from the fact that it can result to all other effects you see that it can cause that fluctuation okay because it can also cause the slowing down of the router since it is not balanced then low voltage low voltage is another related voltage issue that is common to the operations of uh, the diesel engine generator so it is possible that the speed of the engine is not high enough remember uh, the speed has an effect on what is coming at the rate at which the uh, magnetic field is cutting the armature 
also has an influence on the amount of voltage that is induced into the armature and uh, directly affecting that speed is the speed of the the engine okay so when the voltage is low we want to check the speed if the speed is correct okay we can check the adjust the avr okay so that is the first place we go to especially if the frequency the output frequency is correct that means that the speed of the engine is correct okay so we want to also look at the fuel supply because the fuel supply can affect the engine speed which will in turn affect the amount of uh, the voltage that is induced into the main armature so the loading tool if the engine if the alternator is overloaded we have more loads on the electrical system than it is designed for you see that if you start dragging the engine okay so uh, once it drags the engine the voltage will drop so we want to check the load that what we have is normal then the excitation system too can also affect it so if the voltage that is coming from the avr is low what the magnetic feed that will be generated at the exciter feed will also be low voltage induced in the exciter armature will also be low output from the exciter armature will be low what is rectified will be low what will be available to the main field will be low and thus what will be induced also into the main armature will be low so we want to check the excitation system so excessive voltage or high voltage the energy if it is over speeding can increase the voltage okay remember if uh, the, the governor the energy control speed control is not functioning properly and you drop load from the generator you see that as the speed is increasing that can increase the voltage or the AVR is delivering excessively high voltage so we want to check and adjust okay we can reduce the voltage then we want to also look at the excitation system okay then the load condition if the load is very light the tendency of the engine tending to run more than uh, normal okay at a higher speed you will also be there so the other one that we'll be looking at is when the generator itself is not producing enough power so if it is not producing enough power what could be the possible cause the exciter would have it's possible that the exciter has failed so if any part of the excitation system has failed power will not be delivered to the main feed okay so and that will affect the generator entirely it will not produce then if we have open winding within the generator okay it's possible that it will not produce or we have fault within the Amateur itself, the stator winding. Then the diode assembly, if it is faulty, it's not delivering, that is if it's open, it's not sending voltage into the main feed. That can also make us not to have power at the output outputs. So those slip rings, the right time that we considered on those static excitation systems. So if the brush, they are not making proper contact with those slip rings, of course, the excitation voltage, the voltage from the exciter, okay, to power the feed will not be available for the feed to produce that magnetism that it actually needs to deliver. So we want to check the brush and the uh, ring, slip ring assembly to see that the appropriate pressure is there and the brush is not worn out okay at those conversion points so it is possible that uh, during operations our alternator could be overheating so when we have overheating issues with the alternator what could be the possible cause overloading remember 
the load is seen as current at the alternator. So once those excessive current flows through the armature winding, remember the I square arrow effect, heat will be generated. So we have what is normal, but once it goes beyond what is normal, the heat will become too excessive. So if we have cooling fans like this or any other cooling system around the alternator, it will, not, it will no longer be effective okay, on the alternator. So we want to check the load. Then if we have fault, shorted windings within the stator, that can also result to overheating. Okay? Then the cooling system too, like here now we have this fan here that is responsible for cooling the alternator. So if it's not effective, okay, if it's not effective, maybe this screw will have blockage to this area, so it's not uh, delivering the required air into the alternator. You will see that it will affect the heat that is generated within the alternator. So those heats that are normally generated will not be evacuated efficiently, okay? And that will affect the heat heating of the alternator itself.